tonight. Debate is done in the Saskatchewan Legislature for 2023. We look back on the active sitting that was. Also, Plains Bison are returning to Batoche, thanks to a transfer to Métis Nation Saskatchewan from Parks Canada. Plus, with unseasonably warm weather and a lack of snow, is there a brown Christmas on the horizon? This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Friday, December 8th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for watching. Premier Scott Moe is sounding off from Dubai over the federal government's plans to cap oil and gas emissions. Ottawa's proposed regulations will require industries to curb their emissions by more than a third of 2019 levels by 2030. But Mo says it's simply more red tape. The federal government says it expects production to rise by more than 10 percent as a result of its plan. Oil and gas is a big part of our province's economy. It's also the largest emitting sector in Canada. Still, Mo says this new plan will have serious economic impacts. Yeah, this is a very, very slippery slope, I would say, and a dangerous situation that the federal government is uh, is venturing into here, where uh, ultimately uh, what they are putting at risk is our, is our Canadian energy security uh, by uh, imposing uh, this many regulations. Mo claims Saskatchewan is one of the cleanest oil and gas, gas producers in the world. He also says the rate that the federal government is trying to phase out fossil fuels simply isn't possible for the province. The Saskatchewan government says it's now looking at constitutional steps to challenge the feds on the oil and gas cap framework. Saskatchewan's fall sitting has wrapped up and as we mentioned yesterday, it ended with the speaker calling on two MLAs to apologize after heated remarks. Jeremy Harrison did. Mira Conway did not, and she was expelled. All of this while Premier Scott Moe is on that trip to Dubai criticizing federal climate policies. The leader posts Marie Mandrake joined the CBC's Adam Hunter today on the morning edition to reflect on the sitting. This whole session was about father knows best. We will tell you which pronouns uh, your kids are allowed to use and we will, because parents know best and we know best. We will... Uh, it, break the rules in terms of sending women out of province for mammograms because we didn't have enough uh, uh, foresight to basically think that we have a problem here and, and deal with the uh, system and we should get credit for doing this even though it's costing 10 times more than it should and how dare you question uh, that we didn't over and over again this was a, the, the theme of this session and I can't imagine that that's not going to eventually hurt government they're doing this for a deliberate wedge issue and maybe it's working for now maybe people are buying into the notion that that there was a riot going on that's completely fictitious and 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 Jeremy Harrison is making up big fat ones in the house and, 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 and in the rotunda about what actually happened, which were just factually incorrect, factually incorrect based on what security was writing in a letter saying, no, this does not happen. We did not lock you in the lounge. You chose to do that. No, the children were not threatened. And oh, by the way, if you were so damn worried about the children being threatened, why do you lock yourself in the lounge while the little kids were walking out? That's not what adults do adults take care of kids and this is the problem i think things like that are eventually going to catch up to this government at some point but for now i think it sadly in some ways it's kind of working for him because it really secures the base it really secures the narrative about uh you know about them taking a strong stance on issues as they are with the federal government. And to be quite frank, one of the, the untold stories this session was basically every time they seemed to be getting into hot water, along came the federal government saying and doing something stupid to bail them out. And, and you know, uh, that's a wedge political issue too. But you know what? It works to their advantage. It's just you have to be reasonable, decent, and smart. And I didn't see that from uh, the government quite often. This is, and I certainly didn't see that from Jeremy Harrison. He got a question leadership here. We did see the federal government come along and give the Saskatchewan Party government more fodder this week, the latest with this cap-and-trade system, Adam. And, of course, the Premier can still access social media in Dubai, so he's been able to weigh in on that as Saskatchewan tells its story at COP28. What's the Premier been doing this week? Yeah, we've we've got some pretty good access, actually, to the Premier, to be fair, and they've made opportunities for us to chat with him, and, uh, and they've put out his schedule 
people and he's been posting and everyone that's over there, a lot of the people that we talked to beforehand are, are posting on social media pretty pre-active, showing the pavilion, what's going on there, you know, meeting with different uh, premiers, both current and former in Canada. And so I think, you know, we have a sense of what's happening there. And the government, uh, you know, they they spent a lot of money to go there. So they are kind of backing it up by saying, hey, we're doing something here. This isn't just us signing an MOU or going to meet with some people. It's 700 Fifty plus thousand dollars on the pavilion space, two hundred and forty-ish thousand dollars on ads. Uh, not to mention all the travel costs. Of course, the mayor of Virginia is there, the city manager. So there's, uh, you know, a pretty big expense to go to Dubai, and this is all coming, as you say, in the backdrop of, as and Marie alluded to, all sitting long. There were carbon tax stories that were happening, whether it was the heating oil exemption in the Maritimes, which forced Sask Energy and the government to go, okay, wait, we're going to exempt it from people's bills. We're going to give them a break on cost of living. Then we had the Clean Electricity Standards uh, Tribunal from the Sask First Act get put into work. We have uh, the cap, uh, oil and gas cap this week, the methane. Uh, you know, so it's just uh, over and over again. This, I, I thought it was a fire hose of information. Plus, the government saying. We're now going to spend money on uh, uh, carbon capture, spend some of this technology fund. We're going to put it into our SMR development. Mm -hmm. So all these things are happening. And as Murray was mentioning, like there's just uh, all this stuff also happening in the background. It was uh, so overwhelming at some times amount of things that were coming in. As Murray mentioned, a lot of it got, went back to the federal government and Scott Moe, that familiar foe of, hey, you're doing wrong by us. And now he's got a platform in Dubai where he's sharing the story of Saskatchewan, as you say. And all the stuff is happening while we're talking about more uh, emissions caps and things like that that are going to affect Saskatchewan. That was just an excerpt of this morning's political analysis with Marie and Adam. You can watch the entire political panel on the CBC Saskatchewan YouTube channel. Now, usually, most people in our province have shoveled a lot of snow by now, some getting ready for some outdoor fun over the holidays. But with milder winter, the aesthetic is looking different. We set out to ask people how they're feeling about a potentially brown Christmas. I don't like snow, I like warm weather, so brown Christmas would be marvelous. It might be a brown Christmas this year. How do you feel about that? Oh, I would prefer to get the snow myself. I haven't seen like before like uh, this stuff, like no snow over here. Uh, I hope we have some snow before Christmas, like on the Christmas day. I do not like snow. Are there any kind of activities you'd miss uh, without the snow? No. For a white Christmas, prefer to go cross-country cross skiing, snowshoeing, that sort of thing. Oh wow, that's sad. <laughs> I always look forward to Christmas. This is my first Christmas in Canada, so I was hoping it would be a white Christmas. And while it is December, it's technically still fall. And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins us now. Still fall. Mm -hmm. Is that why it's still warm? <laughs> yeah, well, I'd like to think so at least. But uh, yeah, we have seen some extremely warm temperatures through the province. 17 high temperature records broken just in this past week. One of them was an all-time December temperature record in Assiniboia. They hit 12.9 degrees on Wednesday. Last time it was that warm in December was 1916 at 12.2 degrees. Regina, we had a low temperature record, not because of how cold it was. On Thursday, yesterday, we only hit 0.8 degrees, and that is the warmest December night that we have had since 1941 in the Queen City. Dry as well, of course, especially in Saskatoon, where we usually get about 8 centimeters on the ground in terms of snow depth and about uh, 16 centimeters in the entire month of December. Big goose egg for both in Saskatoon as of today so far in December. You've actually had more rain in Saskatoon so far this month, about 5 millimeters than you've had any snowfall. Now, in terms of that uh, white or brown Christmas, Sam, we're still a ways out. Things can change, and we might very well see some snow, but how much are we going to get? I'll let you know in your full forecast. All right, thanks, Ethan. You bet. 
A new safe house for human trafficking survivors in Saskatoon is getting a financial boost. The province is putting $1.2 million into the facility. Half of that money comes from the federal government. It gave $20 million to the province for its national action plan to end gender-based violence. The facility receiving the money is called Hope Restored Canada and it opened in 2019. Officials say it's the only safe house in the province for women and youth escaping sex trafficking and sexual exploitation. It's also one of the first programs to receive this new federal funding. We are needing space. Housing is a huge need in our province. Um, one, also shelter where it's immediate access to barrier free shelter and housing as well as transitional housing that's connected to active supports and working with clients who are coming into this. And so yes, 100% housing is a need for this. Saskatchewan has one of the highest rates of human trafficking incidents per capita. A new group home for young people needing mental health support has opened in Saskatoon. This is the new Garden of Hope. It's the second mental health group home for young people 12 to 18 in Saskatoon. The facility is a safe space to get help to prevent self-harm, suicide attempts and aims to keep kids out of the hospital. Eight people will move in here soon. Officials say this space is desperately needed. We've got a waiting list of 25 kids to get into a spot. So um, there's a need and we need to help people at this age, our young people, because we got to help them break the cycle and show them that they're worth something and that they're, they, they can do it. The mental health supports are delivered through EGADS, a Saskatoon organization that offers housing, education, job support and parenting programs. The money to operate the home comes from the Saskatchewan Health Authority, the provincial government and is just over a million dollars a year. Well, imagine my surprise when the overnight rain melted, melted all the remaining ice and snow by my place this morning. It's not completely gone in Regina or Saskatoon, as you can see here, but there is not much left, if any. But that wasn't the case in all areas of the province. Ethan, will have your weekend forecast after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Archaeologists in Calgary are investigating a confrontation from eons ago. It involved a tyrannosaur and two smaller dinosaurs that it devoured. Helen Pike looks at what the moment is revealing about the age in which it happened. You can see all the ribs in this region. Something was out of place. The toes, they didn't belong to the young tyrannosaur. Immediately, the technician knew that there was something different about this fossil. The University of Calgary's Darla Zielinski and the Royal Tyrol Museum's curator of paleontology, Francois Therrien, led a team of international researchers comparing the bones to collections around the world. And uh, we decided it was a good idea to flip the specimen over and prepare from the inside out to see what was hiding inside the rib cage. And it's at that time that the bones of two small dinosaurs were discovered uh, where the stomach would have been uh, located. Both eaten the same way, by pulling the leg right out of the hip socket. The thigh bone there, connected to the knee, shin bone, exactly what we find in the stomach of the tyrannosaur. We were able to determine that they were both the same type of dinosaur, this little bird-like dinosaur, Chitty Pass. And all those bones are only hind limbs, so obviously this juvenile Tyrannosaur was a very particular or fussy eater and had an appetite for drumsticks. They were young dinosaurs, like they were not even a year old. So it tells us that this tyrannosaur liked to eat uh, small dinosaurs, but also very young dinosaurs. Terrion says it's proof young tyrannosaurs didn't compete with the adults, grabbing their own grub until they developed stronger skulls and teeth. As they grew, they became the top predators and fed on duckbill dinosaurs and horned dinosaurs. So it's showing us that actually tyrannosaurs occupied all the different uh, ecological niches, all the different places and food webs as a single species just by growing through it, which is totally different from what we see uh, with other meat-eating dinosaurs. He says it's likely what led to their ecological prowess. Helen Pike, CBC News, Drumheller. This weather update is brought to you by Crestview Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, proud member of the Capital Automotive Group.
And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. I have this sudden desire to go home and watch the Jurassic Park movies, but it's not storm weather anymore. No, it sure isn't. Uh, that system very quickly moving uh, out of the province and is now uh, in Manitoba's hair right now still. That's that big area of snow that moved through portions of eastern Saskatchewan last night. Snowfall amounts kind of spotty, but we did have some reports closer to the Manitoba border of about 6 to 8 centimeters as of about 7 o'clock uh, this morning. And again, mostly rain. Rain. Places like Prince Albert and Saskatoon yesterday, four to five millimeters or so uh, in there. But now just some cloud cover uh, lingering in the south. High pressure moving in and clearing things out into central Saskatchewan. Uh, but along with that system, we did see the winds pick up and it is still quite gusty, especially if you're in that far southeast corner. Some gusts up to 60 kilometers an hour at times this afternoon. But again, that starts to move away as that uh, system moves out. Temperatures uh, fairly seasonal, still above that uh, in southern Saskatchewan and uh, this is well above seasonal still in the north even at minus eight minus nine uh, roughly sitting around minus three and minus four at the moment through much of south and central so is there any snow to be had over these next few days? Well, really not all that much. What's not going to help is this area of high pressure, which just keeps things sunny for us tomorrow afternoon. Bit of cloud moving through northern Saskatchewan, and especially for the far north, that'll remain a theme through the weekend. We do cloud over as we get into the early morning hours on Sunday, but for the southern half of the province, that clears away. The north, though, as I say, the reason it stays cloudy is because of this low pressure system, and that'll bring some really not all that measurable snow, maybe a couple three centimeters to the far north before that slides out of the way, and another area of high pressure begins to clear things out, and uh, sunshine likely a theme for the upcoming week here, and that means that winds will diminish too. Still a bit breezy in the southeast tonight. But really, tomorrow and Sunday, we're not expecting things to pick up. Uh, in the far north, we may see that gust a little bit strong at times as we head into uh, Sunday as that low pressure system begins to pass by. Now, the other thing that, of course, we're watching is uh, not just the snow that's falling, but those temperatures. And we are under a bit of a trough here, bringing some cooler temperatures for the first part of the weekend. But as we start to head into next week, pay close attention to this developing ridge out west because, again, that'll move our way eastward uh, as we head into the start of next week and even the middle of next week and we'll really start to see temperatures bump up again. You'll see that here in our seven day forecast for Regina where after a weekend of maybe a few flurries uh, overnight Saturday into Sunday things will clear out and we could be above freezing again as we head into Tuesday Wednesday maybe even Thursday sunny conditions for the most part as well. Saskatoon, we're looking for highs uh, around minus three tomorrow, near freezing Sunday. Bit of a drop on Monday before again we start to uh, rise in temperature and that uh, the sun will come out Monday. Keep in note, quite windy as that low pressure system passes by. So the hopes for a white Christmas, Sam. Yes, they just keep getting slimmer and slimmer. I think that um, there's a lot of farmers who are going to be writing to Santa putting El Nino on the naughty list. Yes, yes, I think uh, they need some snow in the new year. That'll be a good resolution. But not like minus 50, please. No, we'll try to avoid it. If we could control that, that'd be great. Right. Okay, thanks, Ethan. You bet. This spectacular light display in Lyon, France, merges art, technology, and history. The festival has its roots in the history of Lyon. It originated in the 19th century as a tribute to Mary, the mother of Jesus. It started as a simple display of candles on windowsills, and today it's viewed as a symbol of Lyon's cultural heritage. We'll be back after the break. Saskatchewan. Kindness is what we do. And CBC is helping Food Banks of Saskatchewan raise $1 million this holiday season. Visit cbc.ca slash bekindsk to find how you can help. It is the Christmas season and kindness is all around. Donating may be one of the many kindnesses we can dole out this season, but another is recognizing those in our communities who've selflessly gone out of their way to help others. Tonight, Laura Sharpaletti brings us one of those stories. <laughs> I know mean, she was gonna make me cry there for a while. It's not every day you get a call from someone saying they're going to publicly honor you for helping them. But Robin Cody wanted Ivy Kennedy to get what she calls her flowers. I feel like a lot of times our community organizers, they don't get the flowers they deserve um, because they're not doing it for accolades. 
they're doing it because they're called to do it. It's something in their heart that tells them this is what needs to be done. Kennedy founded the nonprofit Women of the Dawn in Regina 30 years ago. It provides counseling and skills programs to vulnerable people with high risk lifestyles. But Cody says Kennedy's mentorship goes beyond that. Cody is from the Cody First Nation in Saskatchewan. In 2006, she felt the call to serve and joined the United States Navy. She served eight years in active duty and two years in the reserves. Cody remained in the States until April of this year when she felt called again. I had decided that I wanted to move home and um, do something for my community. I wanted to come home and serve my community. So Cody ran for the Saskatchewan First Nations Veterans Association. But she says there's a generational gap between veterans. So Cody called up the most helpful person she knew, Ivy Kennedy. Without hesitation, she went to the phone call, like she went to the phone and started phoning people right away. I watched Robin from a little girl to where she is now, that dedication in her, and then I watched her when she was in the, in the Navy, and I thought, my God, she's a role model for our First Nation youth. Kennedy contacted her network, vouching for Cody. Cody was elected as South Branch president of the Veterans Association in late October, and Kennedy was there to film it. Aw, she's crying. Cody says Kennedy has a lot to do with her win. I feel um, very special today, and um, a lot of times we don't get that thank you. You know, we work hard and we go through a lot of trials and tribulations within the community. Sometimes they don't think that they're, what they're doing is making an impact in people's lives. And I just wanted to let her know that her, her work and her legacy is impacting our community and, and helping women like me achieve great things in life. Cody says Kennedy is an example of how women can lift each other up. And she'll always admire Kennedy as a beacon of kindness. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News. Regina. And Ethan's back with one last look at weather. Yeah, and it looks like uh, we're in for a less active night uh, through a lot of the province tonight. Minus six in Regina. We'll see the clouds continue to clear away. And as we get into tomorrow morning, uh, it looks like we'll be, be sitting in a mix of sun and cloud. That'll pretty much be the theme through the day. Minus seven in the morning. A uh, little chilly with the wind chill down around minus 13. Could certainly be worse, though. At noon, though, we'll be around minus four and uh, warming up to near the freezing mark. Saskatoon uh, also looking at minus seven uh, at midnight as well. Well, skies partly cloudy for you folks. And then as we get into the morning, that's when clouds start to clear away a little more. We're at minus 9, feeling closer to around minus 15. Full sunshine by the afternoon and minus 6, and those winds not too bad either. Not just a good Saturday to get out, Sam, but uh, a really nice weekend and week ahead if you need to get uh, some chores done or just get outside. All right. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. And before we go, a return to the landscape and now a new home for 25 Plains Bison in Saskatchewan. The animals were transferred from Parks Canada to Métis Nation Saskatchewan. They started at Grasslands National Park to establish a new herd on Métis Nation Saskatchewan lands near Batosh National Historic Site north of Saskatoon. They were relocated to a portion of the 690 hectares of land on Batosh grounds that were transferred from Parks Canada to the Métis Nation in July of 2022. And that is it for us tonight. For news anytime, you can head to cbc.ca slash sask, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or download the CBC News app. Thanks for watching, and have a great weekend.